Many of us simply move from one large rectangular box to another one, our home, the office, maybe the gym, in our car or in the subway. Throughout the day, there's minimal time for sunlight. Then there's those of us patently avoiding the sun in the name of safety. But could this be to our detriment? Are the costs of missing sunlight in our lives outweighing the benefits? And does the sun really pose the dangers we've been led to believe? Where I come from, sunny Western Australia, we were versed from day one in the dangers the sun allegedly poses. The sun shining down, the sun desperate to brown. But skin cancer isn't so hot, no it's not. Animation has certainly come a long way since Sid the Seagull. Back home, the sun has a potency that seems to penetrate your very bones. There in summer, more than 15 minutes of a direct sun exposure, and I knew I'd be coming home with some kind of solar injury. My main man, Hugh Wolverine Jackman, he was born in Sydney, but he went to acting school in Western Australia. This could account at least in part for the brushes with skin cancer he's had over the past decade. In 2016, he posted this shot of himself on Instagram, writing, this is what happens when you don't wear sunscreen. Hugh has reportedly been treated six times for skin cancer, albeit basal cell carcinoma, or BCC, said to be the least dangerous of the skin cancers. BCC is one of the three most common types of skin cancer. It's so named because it starts in basal cells, cells which create new skin cells as old ones die off. So that's the least dangerous type. Others are melanoma and squamous cell carcinoma, or SCC. You can see their relative penetration of the skin here. Squamous cell carcinoma, or SCC, is the second most common skin cancer to BCC. Lighter skinned people are most likely to get it. It can also take hold in darker skin. Places that get frequent sun exposure like the face, neck, arms, chest, back, and rim of the ear tend to get SCC. It can grow deep into the skin and cause damage and disfigurement. Early diagnosis and treatment can prevent this. When the cells which give our skin its color become cancerous, we call it melanoma. Why is it the most dangerous? because it has a tendency to spread. It can start with a pre-existing mole on your skin. It can also start as a suddenly appearing dark spot that looks different from the rest. Now that I've scared you into never stepping foot into broad daylight ever again. <coughs> let me tell you that the science isn't completely settled on this subject, at least in terms of melanoma. There are widely diverging views on the role of the sun. On this topic, I'm fortunate to speak with Dr. Roger Schwelt, who's an Associate Professor of Medicine at UCRI. Dr. Schwelt, it's a great pleasure to have you join us on Vital Science today. Thank you so much. Firstly, the sun gets a lot of bad press. There are many websites that connect the deadliest form of skin cancer, melanoma, to sun exposure. What's your take on this? Yeah, there was a very large study that was done in southern Sweden, actually, where they picked about 30,000 women in southern Sweden at random, and they followed them prospectively for about 20 years. And what they found was, was actually very interesting. They found that those women that had sun avoiding exposure actually had a higher mortality than those that went freely out into the sun. There's been a number of studies that have actually looked at this. Is It's kind of a paradox. We think that being in the sun is gonna expose us to more deadly radiation that could raise our incidence of cancer. But a number of studies, large studies, and actually very well-designed studies have shown quite the opposite. What would it be in sun exposure that would be preventing or, or curtailing the risk of melanoma? So we have the infrared spectrum, which is beyond red, and we have the ultraviolet. And we've talked about ultraviolet as being a little bit more uh, dangerous in terms of causing mutations, but also very beneficial in terms of making vitamin D in your skin. The near infrared spectrum is an area of very uh, hotly looking at uh, information and research right now because near infrared radiation has been shown in a number of studies, in a number of areas to be beneficial to our skin and to be beneficial to our body. It increases nitric oxide when it's uh, emitted. Um, lasers that use uh, near-infrared radiation are now being shown to improve activity, potentially reduce dementia. When you talk about infrared, I remember thinking back to my grandmother and she had, this is you know going back probably to the 80s, and I remember she has this really old uh, infrared lamp. I'm not sure if she ever used it, but I know that, that she was given this by a doctor for, for some kind of treatment. This does ring a bell, the, the kind of health benefits of, of infrared. Yeah, so if we talk about those benefits of infrared, um, not to get too technical, but inside of each of our cells is a, a powerhouse. It's, it, there's a, a generator, and that's called the mitochondria. Now, just like engines in our car, the engines produce locomotion, but they also produce a byproduct, which is heat. And if you don't deal with that heat in the engine, as you know, it can shut your engine down. 
These mitochondria produce energy for the cells so you can be alive and live, but they also produce something called oxidative stress. And if this oxidative stress isn't dealt with, there's a, a growing body of research that shows that this oxidative stress can cause diabetes, hypertension, a, a lot of the diseases that we see in, in Western societies, not only that, but also dementia. And this oxidative stress has also been tied to things like COVID-19 mortality. This oxidative stress, this is like the, the heat in the engine, like it's, it's overheating the engine in this, in this analogy. That's exactly right. And this oxidative stress can actually damage the mitochondria and poor functioning mitochondria, poor functioning powerhouses means that the cell is not gonna get the energy that it needs, it's not gonna metabolize well, and you become a sick individual. How does the sun fit into this? Exactly, so what they're proposing based on a number of research articles is that near infrared radiation penetrates deep down through the skin layers and actually causes the increased production of melatonin. Now you may say, I've heard of melatonin before. What's melatonin? Yeah, melatonin this, this helps you to sleep, right? I, I yeah, know people exactly. People take this to help them sleep. It, exactly. Melatonin is something that people take to sleep. We used to think that it was only secreted in the pineal gland in the brain. It came on at night. All of those things are true. But what we're finding out, which is even more uh, amazing, is that 20 times more melatonin is produced in the body, in the mitochondria, right on site, to mitigate this issue that we, we deal with called oxidative stress. And so melatonin mops up the oxidative stress. Melatonin is the cooling system. Melatonin is the oil pump. It's the water pump. It's the thing that keeps the engine cool and running effectively. How do we get more melatonin? What's, what's the key to that? Yeah, so you can't ingest it. A lot of people think, oh, I just buy some melatonin and, and ingest it. This is made on site, right there where the heat is, right there where the heat in the engine is. The way you get more of it is to get more near-infrared radiation. And 53% of the energy coming from the sun is in the form of infrared radiation. So getting outside more is really important. You cannot get near-infrared radiation from LED lights. You cannot get near-infrared radiation from windows where the sun is coming in, especially with the new low E glass. You actually have to get outside. The good news is though, Brendan, is that you don't have to actually be directly in the sun. You can actually be outside this near infrared radiation, we feel it on the sun as, as heat. You know, if you go outside, you have a t-shirt on and you feel that sun on your back, that heat that you feel is actually near infrared radiation penetrating down through your skin into your body and, and stimulating your heat receptors. I think a lot of people, their time outside is they're walking to work or coming back in the evening or the late afternoon and they're often in the shade, but you're saying, that doesn't cancel out the benefits of, of infrared radiation. You're still getting some benefit from the sun at this time. Yeah, you, absolutely. You know, 200 years ago in, in American society, we spent 50% of our lives outside. And we didn't have these types of diseases that we saw back then of dementia, diabetes. We're seeing a, an increase just in the last 50 years. And I don't have a, a, an argument with the dermatologists on this. Cover up. It's fine. Wear, wear a wide brim hat. You don't have to be in direct sun exposure, but getting outside and getting into near infrared light is, is good for you.